Hello, everyone, and welcome to Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves. I'm your host, Ike. I'm here with Max. Say hello, Max. Oh, what's up, Ike? How you doing? Pretty great. You ready to get down and have the folks at home learn more about you? Uh, I'm ready to get down and have the folks at home learn more about me. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So first up, in the old classic, what's your favorite dad joke? My favorite dad joke? Um, I, I, got, I got a pretty bad one, <laughs> if you're ready for it. And, oh, I'm uh, ready for it. It's, uh, hey, did you hear what happened to that Italian guy? No, what happened to the Italian guy? He uh, passed away. No! <laughs> How was that? that? That's exactly what the folks at home showed up for. Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of, like, really bad dad jokes, but it's just sometimes they don't stick, you know? It's hard to remember them as, as time goes on. <laughs> What movie will you never skip when channel surfing, Max? Oh, man. Uh, I think it's got to be uh, not, uh, what, what was it? Uh, it's not I Love You, Man, but it's uh, the one with the wedding in Hawaii. I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now. Um, uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. For, forgetting Sarah Marshall is, is a classic for me. It's one of my favorite comedies. I think, I think that's it. Growing up, did you have a favorite book that you feel like should be made into a movie these days? Um, yes, and I think it might have been made into a show at some point, but it was not big. Um, it's a good question, but uh, if you've heard of the book Ender's Game, just the way everything oh, was... Oh, yeah, it, it was made into a movie. Yeah. It was made into a movie, yeah. So I guess that doesn't really count, but I can, I, no, I'm, still, I'm still going with it because I haven't that's seen still, it. That's, yeah, it's still your favorite book growing up. Yeah, and... Um, I, it just wasn't like as big as a movie as like I, I thought it should be, given how the quality of the book. So I'll, I'll still go with that. Did you did you see the movie? No, I did not, because I wasn't even okay. like I said, I wasn't even sure if it had been. I was like, I think it That's... may have been a show or something at some point, but um, yeah, just like the description in the book is is so incredible, the way it's written and just the story, especially of the original. There's like three or four books, but mm. the the original book was just so good. It was one of my favorites growing up. If you had to give up sight or two other senses, which would you give up? Do I get to cho- I get to choose the other two senses? You get to choose the other two senses. Oh man, um, I think I would give up two other two other senses most likely. Can I give up like touch? Yeah, S- sense of touch is one. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would give up two other senses because I would e- already like snap off giving up. Uh, like touch and hearing rather than my sight. I think just having mm. sight just allows you to do so much more. Obviously you can be productive, you know, and be a member of the blind community and there's a lot you can still do, but I think having sight is just like, it's, it's too much of a It's a good changer. thing that's not a reality. Otherwise this podcast would be really difficult if you gave up hearing though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I guess I couldn't do the podcast. What's the best piece of advice you ever got? Or one that sticks out to you after all these years? Best piece of advice I ever got. Hmm. I, I, I think it probably just has to be like um, focus or like do what you love, whether that's for work or otherwise, but have something you're passionate about. And, and you know, if you're doing what you love, then it's not work. And uh, I think that's a, that's a really good piece of advice. So just try to find something you like to do and, you know, something you're passionate about and focus on that. Totally. It's a great answer in general, and especially for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> passionate people, huh? Exactly. That's, that's what we're about. I'm the right man for the job. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you were chosen. What's, uh, what's something you know now that you wished you knew earlier? Something I know now that I wish I knew earlier. Um, this is a this is a I, I, something popped right into my head, and I wish earlier in life, uh, just like a lot of people growing up, I had no idea what I wanted to do as a career. Um, mm-hmm. So when I graduated high school, going into college, I had no clue what I wanted to focus on. Really, no clue at all. I, I had no picture in my mind of what my life would end up looking like. And um, now uh, I'm a software engineer, 
and I really wish I had a little bit more of a, you know, idea that that's something that I'd be passionate about and something that I want to do. Um, you know, earlier on in my life, then I could have focused on that. You know, I, I graduated college with history degree. I could have done computer science. So um, it would have been a lot easier if I knew that I wanted to go into software engineering earlier. So kind of like look inward more. Yes. And kind but, of kind of discover yourself. True. But I think like, you know, it, it's hard to say that in hindsight because you just don't know when you're younger. Even if I like looked at myself in depth more like, you know, turn inward. What, what are your, you know, do you really like, it's still like can be almost impossible to determine something like that. But if I had known, yeah, that would be, that would be great. True that. Do you have a favorite life story or moment that you like to kind of tell at a party? It's a go-to if you will. Oh man. Favorite life story. Or just <sighs> one that, you know, you're sitting around at a party and just people, you know, swapping stories and just hanging out just with friends is there one that always is kind of like a, a great go-to or that people will like oh max tell that story it's so great i i gotta say no um nothing is like jumping out at me i think i always just like to tell a story kind of based on you know the conversation or the atmosphere or what other people are talking about i, I can't think of something off the top of my head that's like such an amazing story about like something we did or something that happened uh, just like out of the blue that fits every situation but i mean i could probably pull something out depending on you know the mood or what other people are talking about you know if people are talking about let's random example say skiing i'll have a lot of good skiing stories but um, what's your favorite skiing story <laughs> okay <laughs> that was off the top of my head but uh I'll, I'll have a good one it's um i was skiing with some friends and uh we basically like took the lifts up to the top and then a lot of times we would hike from there um, to go where the lifts cannot get to, um, you know, to get the best snow where nobody else has ridden before. So we got to get that fresh powder. Exactly. Got to get that fresh pow. So we were doing that. We hiked pretty far and then we, you know, had our plan of how, how to get back down and we're going down. I kind of get separated from the other people and then I'm just skiing down and then in front of me there's just a red rope and like basically a huge cliff and I, I had to stop and I look to my left and it's uphill and I look to my right and it's uphill and behind me is uphill and <laughs> I kind of just went the wrong way and I ended up having to hike like several miles which through the snow is you know <laughs> with really, skis yeah with I, I was snowboarding but yes with with the board with a snowboard yeah. and uh I was like getting pretty worried because I was like I don't think anybody is going to come down here. Um, I don't know exactly where the lift is. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, I think I'm going the right direction. Um, so, you know, that panic started to set in, but then uh, eventually uh, got to the lift. It, it was definitely over followed, a while. Followed the breadcrumbs and found your way back home. Yeah, exactly. But I was, I was worried. <laughs> I thought I might definitely. not find my way back home. Yeah. <laughs> In your estimation, what's the most overrated restaurant? Okay, um, I got it. I got one. I'm gonna say a fast food restaurant. And I'm gonna say Subway because I really do not think Subway is good quality. I think the meat is not to a good standard, similar to like Taco Bell quality meat. And some people seem to love Subway, um, and I just don't want to eat that anymore. I guess let me follow up now with also Chick-fil-A. I know people are going to hate me for that. I'm, I'm canceled now, but I had it for the first time recently and I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> for its price tag and for it existing through all of its troubles, it really should be considerably better than it is. You're, you're agreeing with sure. me that Chick-fil-A is not that good. It's not nearly as good as its price tag and through like the fact that so many people still go there even though it's had so much kind of public, you know, um, crying out for its, you know, non-existence. Yeah. But like, it still exists and it's like, but it's so meh and so expensive. Yeah. Like not only is it like, okay, it's also really expensive and like does a lot of negative and it still exists. Just baffling. And I think like I, I was just so overhyped. I would tell people, oh, I've never been to Chick-fil-A and they would 
you know, be in shock, jaw on the floor, <laughs> like, oh my God, you've never been to Chick-fil-A? And then when I had it, I was like, it's, it's okay. <laughs> and then they looked at you even angrier. Yeah. <laughs> if you could guarantee one of your dreams would come true, which one would it be? Okay. Um, I think I'll, I'd have to go with um, one of my dreams growing up, not as much anymore, um, but one of my dreams growing up was that I wanted to be a professional athlete in some fashion. Uh, I was really into skateboarding and snowboarding, and um, I always thought, how cool would that be to do for a career to be a professional athlete? Um, so if that dream had come come true, that 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 would have been awesome. Which sport would you choose? Um, honestly, I think I would have chosen uh, skateboarding because I think that was what I did the most. And uh, you know, after like middle school, high school, a lot of times I would just go to school and then go skateboard until it got too dark to skateboard anymore. And I do that every day and then skate on the weekends. So I was really passionate about it. And I, I just love the sport. And uh, I always thought like, oh, you know, I'm decent, but could I be pro? And I was I'm <laughs> definitely not good enough, but um, you know, if it <laughs> do was- Do you still skate? Yeah, yeah, I still skate around San Diego. I've gone to all the, the skate parks around here, but not that much. I mean, I'm not old, but I'm getting a bit older now. And when I when I fall now, it's like, wow, that yeah. that's a lot worse than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, you don't just like jump back up and get back on the board with yeah. ripped jeans and bloody knees. Yeah. You like take a moment and arch your back and do that. Groan. Yeah, or just like I don't even fall. But then just like the next day, like I have like a pulled muscle or something. And I like, yeah. you know, can't exercise or walk around well for, you know, a week or two. And I'm like, I didn't even get hurt. I just... <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. I, sli- slight tangent on that. I used to, uh, at one point in my life, I lived somewhere and it didn't have a bed or not one worth sleeping on. And so I slept on a love seat for nearly a year oh, man. with no, with no problem. I mean, I was yeah. like, I was like 19. Yeah. So I, like it, it was no problem. And I remember going home or staying at a friend's place or something like that in my like later twenties and sleeping on like a nice couch and waking up in the morning and like regretting it. It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> T- times they are changing. Can't, can't do that anymore. Can't, can't do that anymore. What's the coolest like trick that you've ever done on a board? Um, I'd say like one of my specialty tricks was 360 flips. If you know what that is, do you know what that is? Is that where the board goes all the way around? The board does a 360 and a kick flip. Uh, okay. So that was like one of my. So it oscillates on it. It yeah. does a it does a full rotation on both axes. Yeah, both axes exactly. Like at the same time. Yeah. Um, so those were a lot of fun, and then also just like grinding on rails was was my specialty, like handrails and just all these different types of bars was, was my favorite thing to do. Awesome. Yeah. If you could work any of the jobs you've done over the course of your life, but get paid the same as the job where you made the most, which job would you work? Okay, um, I would have to choose lifeguarding. It was just a great job. I will say I have not had many different jobs um, throughout my life. Uh, I worked as a lifeguard for like four or five years, kind of around high school age. And then at the end of college, I started doing valet work. I worked in hotels since then. And now uh, I'm a software engineer. But uh, lifeguarding was such a good gig and I recommend anybody who is looking for a job like around that age, it's so much better than working in retail or fast food. It, you get tons of breaks, you're out in the sun, you're by the pool, on your breaks you can swim in the pool. And again, there has to be a ton of breaks for lifeguards, uh, according to like, especially California law, to you know be safe so the lifeguard's not getting too tired. So like every half hour, a lot of times you get like a 15 minute break. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It's just the That's best great. job hanging out by the pool in the sun. A, a man after my own heart. Breaks yeah. are paramount. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have to save a kid or somebody? No. Um, I lifeguarded for five years. I never had to jump in. Um, I guess the closest I got to that was I was standing on the edge of the pool. And, you know, lifeguards, you have that, like, the kind of the long, like, almost like inner tube looking thing that's red. That yeah. It's kind of like a floaty. And I'm standing on the edge of the pool and there's a young girl 
I want to say she's three, five years old, something like that. She's in the pool on her own. She's in the deep end and she's, you know, kind of struggling to keep her head above water. Um, and I'm just standing there staring right at her, seeing like, is she going to just swim to the edge? How's she doing? And then her mom <laughs> runs up behind me, all panicked, yelling, help her, help her. Meanwhile, she was like, you know, three feet from the edge of the pool. So I just stuck out the inner tube. She grabbed onto it, and then I just pulled her to the edge. <laughs> I was Classic like, <laughs> professional and scared parent mindset interaction for yeah. sure. It was like, I was literally, there's like five people in the pool total. It's a massive pool. Yeah. And I'm just standing there staring at her. Like, she's got it. She's, <laughs> she's doing fine. She's just kind of like, you know, head back. Yeah. Trying to keep her head up. But like, the mom just comes it, over yelling. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's testing her, but she's passing. Yeah, and I, I, she yeah, probably she, she's not acing the test. She's getting like a B minus, but she's still passing. Yeah, and if she ever she, you know she, she help. went down, I could have just saved her. But yeah. she wasn't going down, and you know I thought she could get back to the edge on her own. But with mom intervention, I I just <laughs> just stuck out the the lifeguard. Uh, I'm imagining floating. this very callous and sarcastic like look as you like you like no look hand the inner tube while you just kind of. Like, quasi glare at the mom being like Ugh. it's like is this good <laughs> like, uh, essentially yeah <laughs> I, got, I got another add on to that story and there was this other lifeguard who you know he thought he was so cool he was like a swimmer um, and he jumped in to save people so many times but I don't think on any of those times he had to do it so <laughs> multiple on multiple occasions uh, he like jumps in and like picks up some kid and puts them on the edge of the pool. And I'm looking at the kid and like the look on the kid's face is just confusion. They were like, yeah, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, I was fine. And he was like <laughs> talking about how he like always jumps into, he's like save people so many times. It's like, yeah, but none of those times you had to do that. <laughs> He's the, he's the fire. He's the guy that if he became a firefighter, he'd go around putting out people's stoves with a hose. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saved you. And there's like, I was making dinner. Yeah. Like, You're welcome. And just like drives off and is like one man. It's like, like now you've ruined the chicken. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're having soup tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what do you regret not having done or tried before you graduated high school? Done or tried before high school. Before you graduated high school. Yeah, before I graduated high school. Um, let's see. I don't know if I have, if there's any regret that stands out to me, like, oh, I wish I had, you know, taken the time to, to do this. Um, no girls that you wish you asked out, no dances that you passed on because you were awkward with zits and, you know, two left feet? Well... I definitely wasn't that into the dances, but I usually went to those. Um, I guess I was always a good student in high school. I guess I could have said I wish I maybe even went farther up to that side and focused even more so on my schoolwork in order to get into a better college. Um, but yeah, overall, I'd say no massive regrets. It's not like, oh, I wish... Um, I didn't drink in high school or, oh, I wish I didn't, um, you know, do anything like that. Or I wish I had, you know, been more adventurous. Um, yeah, not, nothing, nothing like that that, that, nice. that stands out. I liked high school, actually. Um, I had, had a good time in college. Actually, I've always liked school. So nothing like that stands out. Like I, there was this one girl I had a crush on and I never talked to her or, you know, I, Max is the guy that got her number <laughs> and went and studied and then went and lifeguarded and then went to the dance, apparently. Well, all right. Yeah, so, I guess, but I was never like one of the popular kids, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I had friends and stuff. <laughs> Did. All right. Yeah. So what are you bad at that you'd like to be better at? I uh, realized, so I have recently, like I said, just I've just now gotten into software engineering and um, as one of the first things of my new job I have to study for several tests that I have to take and um, I'm making some flashcards to study for them and I was like my handwriting is so bad <laughs> like some it's so bad that sometimes like I can't even read it later <laughs> 
So that's definitely something I'm bad at that I, I wish I was better at. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not about to sit there and, and practice my handwriting and try to try to get yeah. better. So do that, do that third grade thing and practice cursive. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's you're going to need to know it. You know what? I, I was actually talking to years and years ago. I was talking about how my handwriting was so bad. And one of my friends who was this really smart guy, like almost like genius level was saying, oh, you know, I've heard that bad handwriting is uh, correlated with high IQ. I was like, okay, I'm going with that. <laughs> and I'll take that to the bank. <laughs> Thank you, friend. I never need to improve at this skill. Yeah, exactly. So, so. Speaking, speaking of never needing to improve, what are you terrible at and have no intention of improving at? Um, <laughs> I guess I guess I can can't use handwriting again because I don't have any intention of improving at that. Um, or I guess we can revert that and say that that can be your answer for this yeah. one. And what would you like to get better at that you are not so good at? Yeah, yeah, this is better. This is better because I have no intention of improving handwriting, but I have one that I'm terrible at, and that is flexibility. I am I, I love to exercise, um, but I am so inflexible. And I always like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start stretching and I stretch a little bit and then I just stop and I always fall off. And I would love to continue stretching and, you know, be more flexible. And, uh, you know, I think that would help with like, you know, going skateboarding and not just like being so tight afterwards. Um, Cause I'm in decent shape, but I am so inflexible. I cannot touch my toes. <laughs> so that's something I wish I could improve on that I'm terrible at now. Every day, man. Do you try your shoelaces without bending any? Uh, I yeah, I, I kind of have to because of my work. I'm like constantly like leaning over a table, and so my back is like yeah. would get messed up. And I like I notice the days that I don't, and so I I try to do it every morning. And if I am in the mindset to remember it, I try to do it every evening if I can. Yeah. It takes like five minutes or something like that. I, I can't quite touch my toes yet, but I like to pretend that's because. I have short arms or something. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but I, I like to pretend. That, that's a good excuse. <laughs> Is there something you're proud of but never get to brag about and would like to? Um, something I'm proud of that I'd like to brag about. It doesn't um, even necessarily need to be brag. Brag might be a, a kind of bad choice of words, but yeah. something to get to, you know, kind of just talk about or you know just out there like depending upon the circles that's one yeah. of the things that kind of is you know i mean we both play magic and that's kind of one of the things that in the circles where we play magic it's kind of awkward to brag about something like that around other people yeah and then in the circles outside of magic it's like it somewhere between doesn't come up and there's like a lot of not understanding so for yeah. me that that can kind of be it that, that could kind of be an example sometimes. That that was going to be like the first thing I thought of as well is because, you know, you and I have both played a lot of Magic and we're both, you know, very good players. But you can't really tell a random person that you're good at Magic the Gathering because they'll say, oh, cool, what is that? So you, you don't really have time to brag about it. That being said, when you first asked the question, my first response was I try to be humble rather than bragging about something, like basically at any opportunity I get. I think it's, you know, so much nicer when, when you see somebody who's just so good at something, but they're humble at the same time. Um, you almost like, you, you almost never see like a humble boxer who's on top, you know? It's like they're all yeah. kind of showboaty and braggy. But then if you look at somebody like Steph Curry on the Warriors, he's, you know, one of the best basketball players of all time but he seems like such a humble guy, like a nice person, you know, willing to talk to anybody. Um, and you don't see that very often, but it's just like so much nicer to see somebody who's really good at something and they're humble. Like I have a good little story that I can tangent off this. And one of my friends, he was an incredible athlete, this guy, Sean, and we're on the beach and he's getting set up to go kiteboarding which is basically like a wakeboard and you're strapped to a kite, if you've seen that. It's like an incredible sport. And I go, are you good at kiteboarding? Like he's such a good skier. He's, you know, again, good at everything. And he goes, no, I'm not that good. I haven't really been doing it much. I was like thinking, no, this guy's so good at everything. He's, he's gonna be good. 
and he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm not that good, you know, playing, he always played it down. He was one of the most humble guys. And he starts going out like from the beach out to the ocean off one of like the first waves. He just does a huge backflip off the wave. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Like at some point, yeah, you can be humble, but that's, this guy takes it to the next level. But it, it's still nice to see, you know, he doesn't want to brag. He's like, I'm yeah, okay, you being know. Being incognito badass. Yeah, like... exactly. But <laughs> Who, me? No, I'm not that good. Meanwhile, I was like in Hall of Fame with multiple medals. Yeah, it, it, exactly. But I, I would much rather see somebody like that who is really good and doesn't brag than somebody who's like just like a showboater or saying like, oh, I'm really good at this. And then you see them and you're like, yeah. oh, you're you're not, you're not actually that good, you know? So. Or even if they are that good, they're just matching the expectation presented. Yeah. You know, it's like, you gotta be like, if you're going to do that, you have to be so good for like people to appreciate it. That it's, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things that it, it kind of like somewhere between a double-edged sword and just like, you're just like kind of cutting yourself short by doing that. There, there is also some aspect, which may not be true all the time, but um, especially for the first example, I brought up the boxer. If you're a boxer and you don't think you're the best in the world, then you might not be. But if you think you're the best, that might actually make you be a better boxer. So there is something to be said for like believing in yourself. Yeah. Because it, that that is yeah. a kind of other interesting way of like it. Yeah. But I mean, thinking the way you think about yourself and the way you present yourself are not necessarily the same thing. Totally. Like totally. there was an interview I saw with Childish Gambino, age ages ago now, yeah. where he was talking about. Uh, like his rap career and like, you know, people were like, do you think you're the best? He's like, well, I mean, I really like other people that I work with, but to be doing this career at this level that I'm doing it, I think everybody that's making music thinks they're the best. Yeah. And it was just kind of an interesting way of looking at it. It's like, you, you just kind of have to, to be at that height and magnitude in your career. Like you can't be like, well, I'm okay. It's like, no, nah. it's yeah. kind of, it's somewhere between disingenuous and like just not going to, you know, your head's going to not be in the right place and you're not going to be able to write music the way you need to. Yeah, that's another really good example. Definitely. You have a day with no obligations. What do you do? Um, it's a good question. I like to, for me, sleeping in, which I, I generally don't sleep in much, so wake up around like 7 or so. I generally get up pretty early. I like to have my coffee, maybe sit on the couch, and um, then I like to have a nice breakfast, maybe some bacon and eggs. I definitely want to exercise on a day where I have nothing planned because uh, I just feel so much better when I exercise. So exercise, you know, coffee, food, exercise. And then kind of the day is, is up to me, you know, go do something fun, especially go do something with my dog. It's just a typical day here. I live in San Diego, so typical day, typical day off for me with nothing to do coffee, exercise, do something with the dog, either go to the beach with him or, you know, go on a walk somewhere nice, come back, spend some time with, you know, with my now fiance. And uh, it sounds like a beautiful day to me. That doesn't like a nice day. Yeah. What do you do now that you wish you had started sooner? Um, I think it, it could be um, eating healthy. And um, I have been eating healthy for, I would like to say a long time, um, like several years, but especially growing up, I was a very picky eater. Um, I was just, you know, always eating burgers, fries, chicken strips. That was like, you know, a big part of my diet, sorry to say. But um, uh, now I eat like a lot of, the... say again? Join the club. I, exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. But now, uh, at least for like the past several years, you know, my fiance and I, like, we, we try to eat um, pretty well. Like, we even eat, like, we try to eat less carbs and we often have like a salad for lunch. Um, and actually, even recently, I've been trying to drink a little bit less. So I'm just trying to, you know, like, if you feel good, um, if you're, you know, if your body's in good shape, your mind is sharper. Just like, yeah. it's just so much better overall. So I wish I had started eating healthier earlier, um, even though I've been doing it for a while. I mean, you know, you can only make one change at a time, but yeah, I guess eating right. healthy. Yeah, it's big. On the flip of that, what do you wish you had ended sooner? Hmm. 
I'm trying to think of even like just a good example of something in my life that I have completely ended. Um, I guess one thing that this could be, and maybe this is a, a sign in my, in my life, um, but I used to play a ton, a ton of video games. So I was playing a lot of, you know, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, that type of thing. I was spending so much time on that. Um, and now I don't really do any, I don't really play any video games anymore. I was also even playing console games back then. Um, but now I'm basically just playing Magic the Gathering. And um, I'm just like happier with more of like a balance in my life, I'd say. Um, so I guess I wish I could have cut out video games earlier and done, spent more time with my family and friends um, instead of video games necessarily. But I mean, on the flip side of that, I could also say like, maybe if I eventually quit Magic, I'd be like, oh, I'm happier not playing Magic. It's just, it's hard to see that now because I love it so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, yeah. it's 2020 sort of deals, right? Yeah, just you asking the question is like, and then I thought of video games. I was like, hmm, what does that say about Magic? <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't think it's exactly the same way it used to be. I mean, I used to wake up early at like 5.30 in the morning um, because I wanted to go play video games or I'd stay up till, you know, 3, 4 in the morning just playing video games all night and then sleep in till 11 and just you know, stuff like that. Um, so that obviously wasn't a healthy lifestyle. Um, so that'll, that'll be my answer. Now, if you could go back in time and tell yourself one sentence, what would it be? And when would you tell it to yourself? This um, is kind of related to like an earlier question you asked. I forget exactly what the question was, but um, if I could tell myself one thing, and I'm not, I'm not going to answer this question like tell myself, you know, all the winners of these sports events so I can get rich or this, you know, idea that I could do back then. I, I don't think that's really the spirit of the question. I, I would just say, like, find what you're passionate about and, um, you know, go into your passions like wholeheartedly, you know, don't essentially half ass anything. It's like if you're passionate whole about ass one thing, yeah, you know, <laughs> half ass two things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> whole ass one thing is is one way to put it but <laughs> yeah go into something like you know fully like for example like yes i was skateboarding a lot but at the same time i never you know tried to take it to the next level to fully commit into doing any competitions or anything like that um going on road trips with other good skateboarders that i knew um and if i wanted to be a professional skateboarder i should have you know thrown myself into that lifestyle when uh, really, I was only halfway in. Um, yeah. So that's not necessarily the example that I wish I had done, but um, whatever passion like people choose, just go into it 100%, not 50% or 80% or whatever you want to say, but just make sure you're fully invested. Yeah. Do you think any of that had to do with the mentality that I feel like is kind of slowly been growing over the course of our lives of like not wanting to be the try hard the person that like really exerts and comes up short um yeah there that's that's definitely true to some extent i mean imagine when you put all your eggs in one basket and then it doesn't work out you you feel like almost like a failure like you flopped or then you don't have anywhere to go from there so i i can t definitely see why people play it safe and uh, I'm still you know doing that today to a large extent actually um, but I, I I think you're right I think I think you're right I think people are scared to commit 100% to be the try hard and scared of flopping and then having no backup plan so they'd rather you know play it safe well not even no backup plan but I mean like that idea of ridicule has definitely for me at times been you know a, a kind of a gate that yeah. will keep me from you know moving on to the next step in an area is just like you know if i come up short you know what will that time have been were you know i could have done something else with that time or what will people think yeah but, you know i mean at the end of the day the end result is you know you won't know if you could have made it and yeah. like that for you and i totally agree for me is you know it's not worth you know we only get one life 
And yeah. so to, you know, waste an opportunity because of worrying what somebody else will think or, you know, looking at yourself as a failure because, you know, you tried something and, you know, it didn't come to fruition. I think yeah. it's definitely one of those things to be wary of when making decisions, to be sure. Yeah, definitely. Nobody wants to look like, you know, the failure, the fool that couldn't do it. Um, I 100 percent agree. So we're going to throw it to our first commercial break. But before we do, if you could make sure listeners of this podcast heard one song, Max, which song would it be? I got, I got one. Um, and th- this is a this is a good one. This is a favorite of mine. And I have a little, I guess, story to go along with why. And it's Right Down the Line by Jeffrey Rafferty. Have you heard of that song? I have not. So I believe it's from the 80s. Um, so it's a little bit of an older song, um, but I, I really like it. And uh, I was driving home from work one day and the song came on the radio. And my first thought was, okay, I like this song. And the first thought that popped into my head was, I know that not only is my girlfriend at the time gonna love this song, but this is going to be like our song together that we call our song. And I know she hasn't heard it. And uh, when, I, when I got home that night, I played it for her and uh, she was just like, I think she said something along the lines of, I think I, like she, she knew it was our song too. And it was just like, that's sort awesome. of sort of meant to be. And that's our song right down the line, Jeffrey Rafferty. And then I went to, I was like, oh, I really like this artist. Let me look at all his other, all his other stuff, all their other stuff. And I didn't find one other song I liked, so <laughs> might be a little bit of a one-hit wonder, but I like the song. Can I uh, write uh, write down the line by yeah. Jerry Rafferty? Exactly. I think it's right. Jeffrey. I, I, it's, maybe it's, it's Jerry. Oh, it's Jerry. Know. Okay, it's Jerry. It's G E R Y. Can I can I throw a second uh, recommend recommendation out there? <laughs> nope. Okay. Right down the line, then. Right, right down the line by Jerry Rafferty. Check it out, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and might want to listen to that instead of one of these corny commercials, or maybe you want to listen to one of these corny commercials and uh, like that song on Spotify and listen to it afterwards. Who knows? I'm not the boss of you. You are the boss of you. Either way, we'll be right back after these messages. Stick around or come back. Have you ever just looked at fried carbs on a plate and thought, I need to eat those, but it doesn't taste all that appetizing? Introducing Catsup. Catsup is a sugary and red syrupy paste that'll overshadow any unappreciated taste. Simply douse the unpreferred tasting object and ingest. Mmm. Thanks, Catsup. And we're back. So, Max, now that we're at the main segment, what is your passion? My passion, like I alluded to earlier, is playing Magic the Gathering, but also making Magic the Gathering content. And I have a YouTube channel making magic videos where basically I just play magic and I talk about magic and I talk about my thought process while I play. That's my, that's my passion. What is it about making magic videos that you're so passionate about? What, what is it about that process that, you know, kind of gets your engine going, if you will? Yeah. Um, I've you know played magic for many years and I used to watch uh, a bunch of other people making content a bunch of other magic professionals and um, I I just kind of thought to myself at one point hmm I think I, I could I could do something like that and maybe I could help other people who are in my position trying to learn the game just because now I know the game well so that's kind of how it started I was like maybe it's something I'll like and uh, I was like I'll just try it and, and see if I like it but then after I started making the content, um, I really liked, you know, making a video on magic and then having, you know, either people comment or talk to me about the videos. And I really enjoyed also interacting with the community and just like even further explaining my thought process, answering people's questions. They said, why did, why did you do this? Or why did you make these decisions? And I can like talk about it further. And uh, I really liked that aspect to it. But again, also just the fact that I learned how to play from watching professionals play their content. And if I'm able to do that for for somebody else, 
it's just something that, that feels good and it's just, you know, I'm playing the game that I love all at the same time. So I think that's, that's really, really awesome. what, what drives it. So to backpedal a bit, when did you first get into Magic? Like, what, do you remember when you first started playing? Yeah, I first started playing Magic, I'd say when I was maybe even 10 years old or so. Um, I just played with my brothers at home. We would, you know, go to the store and buy packs of Magic cards. Um, but then around like a, two or three years later, I stopped playing. And it wasn't until college where my roommate said, hey, have you heard of this game called Magic the Gathering? And even as a child, like when I played when I was, you know, 10, I just knew in my head that like, oh, I could be good at this game. Like I, I know the game well, I, I could tell. And um, then I said, yeah, I've heard of it. I used to play, like, let's go play in some tournaments. And then uh, he was like, oh, I've never really done that. Let's look, let's check it out. And after we went to our first like local tournament, it, it was all, uh, I guess, uphill from there, but <laughs> it was all, uh, you know, smooth sailing from there. We got really into it after that. And um, I've been playing, you know, ever since college. So for the past, I want to say eight years or so, um, I've, I've been playing consistently. When did you first, um, like, what age were you? Were you 10 was the youngest or is it younger than that when it started? Uh, I'm trying to think exactly. Um, I don't know the exact year, but yeah, I know it, it must have been around nine or 10 years old is, is when I first, like, knew what a magic card was and okay. and uh and started you know playing quote unquote kitchen table magic with, with my brothers at home and we played with our dad too oh, it, awesome. it, it was a fun time yeah that sounds rad yeah. did you guys ever go to tournaments before you were in college or is that something that started after college no definitely that started like after college um again when my roommate at the time told me like have you heard of magic and i i said yeah i used to play like Basically, I told him, like, I'm going to smoke you like I'm really good, <laughs> <laughs> even though I hadn't, hadn't played in years. <laughs> then he, you know, it's like, have I heard of magic? Yeah. Let me show you how much I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, once we like went to, it was actually pretty funny because we went to like the local, it's called a Friday Night Matter, like the local tournament. And uh, I ended up losing the first round. And then I go, oh, I lost the first round, and he lost the first round too, and we just both left because we thought it was over. But that, oh, is, that's that, is, hilarious. that, that is not how it works. Yeah, it uh, turns out that's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that was pretty funny. But yeah, then I just started getting really into it because, again, I knew that I like had a mind for the game when I was young. And then when I took it to the competitive scene, I really wanted to prove, okay, I can be as good as any of these people here. And um, I just kind of kept... kept you know, once you go play at a tournament, it's easy to just keep getting more and more sucked in. And yeah. uh, I've, been, I've been honestly playing consistently ever since. That's so, awesome. Yeah, for the past like eight or nine years or something like that. So kind of a, a bit of an about face. Mm -hmm. What would it take for you to lose interest in playing Magic or making Magic content? You can answer for one or either or both. Yeah, I... I think what it would take um, for me to lose interest in Magic entirely would would most likely be, and I'm honestly, I, I wouldn't say I'm worried about it per se, but the direction that Wizards of the Coast, the company that makes Magic, they're, they're taking it in kind of like a different direction now. They're not focusing as much on the competitive scene um, as far as like making cards or providing that to the player base. They're more focused on like the casual side of Magic. So without much competition in Magic, I don't think I could go back to really just like playing Magic for fun at, at home casually because the competitive side of Magic has been so ingrained. I couldn't really go back to, you know, just playing for fun and really getting the same enjoyment out of that. So if the company took Magic down a, a route where I'm like, this isn't the same game anymore, I'm not really liking it. That could definitely end, like you know, my enjoyment in Magic. But um, it it would take a lot at this point. I mean, I've been playing for a while. Um, I don't have plans to to quit right now. But if the game gets taken in a direction that I'm just not having fun anymore and it's a different game, then I could see uh, ending that, ending playing. So as we were talking about before uh, we started recording. I think I was like one of the first 10 subscribers you had 
Yeah. On YouTube back when you first started your channel. Yeah. Um, Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, if so, now you've gotten up to just over two thousand subscribers. Yep. Which congratulations, that's amazing. Thanks. If it started to regress, like let's say somehow, I I don't know how this would happen. Yeah. But let's say you you got canceled. You got found in a demoralizing position with a donkey in a barn, whatever. Okay. Okay. And, you know, people st- people stopped, you know, wanting to, like, hear your content for whatever okay. sad, strange, or whatever reason. Okay. If you went down to zero subscribers, do you mm-hmm. think you would still continue to make content? Because, like, you were saying one of the things that you really enjoy doing is engaging with the community and knowing that you're, like, helping people get better or find enjoyment yeah. as you previously did and still do by watching yeah. the videos. So if that aspect of it went away, do you think you'd still find enjoyment in making videos? Okay, let me first take your question and I guess slightly flip it because if I went down to zero subscribers and just like I was hated for some reason, no, I would probably not make content um, because then yeah, the interaction is gone and people are just gonna like look at this, you know, this guy they hate making content. That's that's not really what I would want to do, but. Let's say, let's say this as an example, not that I was found with a donkey in a barn, but just like, let's say my subscriber <laughs> count started going down, right? Okay. Yeah. So like, instead of like, I go down to 1500 and then down all the way to like a thousand subscribers, everyone's leaving the channel. They don't want to watch anymore. That wouldn't really matter to me as much. Um, I mean, I'm not making this content as something like I'm trying to get every subscriber I can and make money off this. I'm just doing it as, again, like a passion project, kind of doing it as something I love to do. So it's almost like just an extension of my magic hobby at this point where I really like doing it. And if my subscriber count started to drop, that wouldn't matter to me as much as long as I still am getting, you know, like interaction and still having fun making content. I would continue to make content. Um, But of course it's good. It feels good like when you get more subscribers and you get more interaction and all that um, and everything that comes along with it. But I'm not doing it's it. Not, yeah, it's not the impetus for yeah. your, yeah. Your I'm doing. not like, oh, I want to be a famous, you know, magic content creator. That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for fun. And then whatever comes of it, you know, it, it, whatever happens, happens. But again, if I immediately was hated for some weird reason yeah. and, you know, I was just getting a bunch of hate and all the comments all the time, of course, that wouldn't feel good to continue making content and maybe I'd still play magic, but I, I would stop at that point, but let's, let's, uh, (laughs) I'm not, I don't, I don't think that's fingers crossed, (laughs) fingers crossed, knocking on wood. Please let's not have that happen. So if you met yourself from an alternate universe and you hadn't found out about magic Mm -hmm. and knowing how you do about yourself, that you enjoy it as much as you do and how much, you know, pride and mm-hmm. pleasure and passion you feel mm-hmm. in making videos and playing the game. If you met yourself in this alternate universe and you had one minute to kind of give yourself the elevator pitch to get yourself in this alternate universe onto playing the game and maybe hopefully streaming it eventually, what would you yeah. say to yourself if you had that one minute? Uh, that would be difficult because <laughs> magic is such a complex game. It would be hard to even say what it is but i think i would just say something along the lines of there is this incredible game you know i love playing even board games too so there's this incredible game it's which i think it is it's sort of a combination between chess and poker it's deep strategy and um just like kind of pitch it in in that sense where it's like such a fun game um and you know, there's there's so many layers to the game. There's so much depth. You'll never get bored of it. Um, it's something that, that, again, you won't get bored. You can do it forever. Um, kind of just pitch it as a game that is one of the best games ever designed. You're gonna love it. There's so much depth. Again, strategy. I like strategy games like that. So um, I would I would pitch it as something something like that. And say you know, there's a great community surrounding it. Um, you're going to meet people, you're going to make new friends like you and I met through magic. So yeah, there's a lot of great aspects to it and just tell myself to give it a try and I'm sure it'll get hooked and 
I probably would get hooked if that was a reality. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now from the awesome to the ostentatious. Okay. What is your pesky peeve? My pesky peeve. <laughs> okay. Um, is it is it my preposterous peeve? Preposterous, pesky, perfunctory, some okay. alliterative p word. Yeah. Okay. My pesky or preposterous peeve is this. I don't know why it, it infuriates me so, but it does. <laughs> if I'm writing a text message, you know how predictive texting is really good? Whenever you're yeah. writing a text message and you're trying to type, tell me if this is different for you or if it's different for other people. Maybe it's just my phone. But no matter what I do, I cannot write the word well, W-E-L-L. -L. Whenever you write well, it automatically corrects to wheel no matter the contents, <laughs> context of the sentence. <laughs> and You've I'm been just, driving too many sports cars. <laughs> I haven't been pulling water out of the ground long enough, I guess. I That's guess. Hilarious. <laughs> so the really weird thing is like predictive text learns from your past. I know, exactly. Like, yeah. So, yeah, that's very weird if you're constantly changing that and it's still just like... It doesn't do it. I know what you want, Max. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, it's we're like, going to throw a well right, or a wheel right in here. And it's like, no, I'm just yeah. trying to say, well, is this gonna is this true? Or, well, what do you think about this? And no matter yeah. what, I cannot type well yeah. on my keyboard. <laughs> even if you do it like one letter at a time, it's like, nah. Yeah, even slowly. Like, it's like, it's, it's you, like a controlling, it's, it's like a controlling stepmother. They're yeah. like, I know what's best for you. <laughs> it's like, I, I just want to write this one word. Yeah, and no matter no. what. And the predictive texting works because, you know, I text about magic a lot. And if I am writing a word and I spell it wrong, it'll autocorrect to some magic terminology pretty often, <laughs> which is funny. But no matter what, I could not write well it only will write wheel so that's tremendous <laughs> for me it's the same with the word and okay. i don't know why it does this i don't think i've ever done this that i can like conceptually think of every time i try to write the word and if i am like doing okay. so i'm one of those not cool kids but smart kids that uses a uh, Android instead of an iPhone. Okay. So when I'm doing like the the kind of like connective letter texting, where you just like you know you scroll oh, yeah. a and a to yeah. the n to the d, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and then you like let it go instead of being and a and d, it's like and and it's just like nine a's, two n's, and three d's. It's like I've never written the word that way, but it constantly will not let me think it, that I don't. It won't let you do the single swipe for and? Yeah, it, it puts it changes it to like a nine letter word. It's just like like I'm like introducing the next act on like <laughs> Sullivan or something like that. And next yeah. like I'm just like I'm like I'm not a wind up, you know, performer. And in this corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Weighing in at two hundred and fifty pounds and Yeah. Oh, yeah it's so that's, that's a weird one because why would it it, it like thinks you're holding down the letter when you're swiping for some reason, but not on the other. No, I, I, I don't it, because it like I'm doing it really quickly and I'm doing it the same amount of time on all the letters, but they are different lengths for all of them. And like, but like the autocorrect option, if I like, you know, you, you write the word and it gives you that it does the space for you where, and then you like, you know, you click backspace to go back to that word and it gives you options to do instead of the word that is there. Yeah, yeah, of course. The first option is A and D. It knows what I want. It yeah. just won't give it to me. It's <laughs> so infuriating. I totally it, relate with your peeve. It's, it's what you said. It's the stepmother who's just trying to like. <laughs> yeah. I know what you want, Isaac. Yeah. This, is, this is what's best for you. Yeah, like, it we're, isn't. <laughs> we're giving you an and. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's my preposterous, that's my pesky preposterous peeve, for some reason. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, it's, it's the worst. The texting just gets Which is me. really strange that like, have you been able to do this where you have a sentence that you use so frequently that you can just start the beginning of it and then like autofill it from like the, you know, the three predictive options like above like the keyboard on your phone, right? Um, I don't, I don't. I don't think maybe it, maybe that's an Apple versus Android thing because maybe Android has better like for like you know future predictive than than Apple, but I don't ever do that now. 
And I don't even I've really able... select predict like words that it wants. I usually just type the whole thing. If I type what, the word what, mm -hmm. the next options are, are you up to? Okay. I like I did that the other day and I was like, oh, my phone knows me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I wrote, and are you free to? And it was a whole mess. Yeah. So <laughs> just what you always my, say. My, yeah, my, my phone has a dissociative uh, identity disorder. And like half the time it's my buddy and the other half of the time it just married my father after it shot my mom in the face. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I guess mine's never my buddy because it just will not let me write well. <laughs> it's full on stepmom all the way. Well, yeah. at least your phone's consistent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, listeners at home, we're going to throw it to our second commercial break. We'll be right back after that for the lightning round. So stick around or come back. It's up to you. Time is relative. Have you ever wanted to kill a small woodland creature or break a window but not had the physical strength? I know I have. Now introducing Rock. Rock comes in a variation of sizes and ready to use. Simply put Rock in your hand, raise it back to ear level, and release. See? You've got it! This ad does not condone the violence against small woodland creatures or windows, nor will it be held liable for any inability of use when coming into contact with paper. And we're back. Thanks for returning, folks. And welcome to the lightning round. Max. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Do you ever cheat on a test in school? Yes. Lions, tigers, tigers or bears? Tigers. <laughs> Favorite dollar menu item? Uh, burger. Caffeine or alcohol? Alcohol. Are hot dogs sandwiches? No. Would you rather step on a Lego shoeless or a cow pie in new shoes late for a date? Lego shoeless, not close. Bow tie or suspenders? Uh, bow tie. First R-rated movie you saw? I don't even know. Is the Matrix rated R? Maybe that. Matrix is rated R. Biggest celebrity crush? Uh, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Throw hands or talk shit? Uh, talk shit. Is there a god? No. Neapolitan or Spumoni? Uh, Neapolitan. Are we alone in the universe? No. Pineapple on pizza or fist fight? Uh, pineapple on pizza. What or how much was the first most expensive meal you ever had? Um, I don't remember. Buckeye Steakhouse, I guess. Nice. If you had the power to see the future but couldn't change it, would you use it? No. Red or blue? Blue. For half a million dollars, how long would you give up your passion? Half a million dollars, how long would I give up my passion? Um, I, I don't understand the question. I have to say how long? Yeah. So if I give you half a million dollars, what is the longest that you would stop making magic content? Oh, okay, okay. Um, half a million is, is a lot. Um, I would, I, I guess, a, a long time. I want to say multiple years because... Yes, I am passionate about making magic content, but if you're going to hand me a half million years. You're going to go buy a house? Yeah, <laughs> and just not do it anymore. <laughs> Shakira's voice in Danny DeVito's body or Danny DeVito's voice in Shakira's body? The second option. <laughs> what yes or no lightning round question would you like me to ask me and have added to future lightning round questions? Do wine or beer? beer nice wines for greek gods yeah i like i, I, I go beer, beer too <laughs> all right thanks max you have anything you want to plug recommend places people could find you or your content i will absolutely plug my content thank you my youtube channel is youtube.com slash snap bolt um go check it out I am also on Twitter at snap underscore bolt underscore games. So snap bolt games on Twitter. You can find me there too. But yeah, go check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snap bolt. Well, thank you everybody for listening at home. And thank you, Max, for being our guest. And thank you so much for having me on the show, Isaac. This has been a great time. I think we had some good laughs. Uh, we did. You know, really fun. Thanks. And if you people out there want to listen more or find the episodes, we put them out every week on SoundCloud or YouTube. At, well, SoundCloud and YouTube, really. At Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves Podcast. 
And remember, time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana, and love is stronger than hate. Have a good night, everybody.